Um, and when I get this side of it, here is in the left hand box I talked about, the upper hand, right hand box, showing me what I get. Off the, out, out of the uh, start here, it gives me an example. I don't like the example. First off, this is going to be an image I want to have in a report, and the tops of the report consoles all have labels. So I really don't need a title at all. So I'm just going to go through in the title section and say, uh, where is the delete key in the dark? There it is. As soon as I tab off of that, the title is gone. So, okay, that's one change. The next change, I really need your help on. I'm going to choose the size, the width and the height of the pixels. I happen to know through experimentation, and having done this more than once, that uh, 400 by 100 makes a nice size. You might make it smaller or bigger, depending on how much data you're displaying, how much room you want to take up in the report. But uh, I need to remember this number because later on we need to feed it back into Salesforce. So when I ask you what's the size that you're going to tell me? 400 by 100. Thank you. That's what I need. Next, this is probably the most complex component of the whole thing. Uh, first and foremost, make sure you select text that comes to falsehood. This just means that we're sending out the data that's going to be in the, for in the uh, chart. It's just pure text. We're not encrypting it or encoding it anyway. The next thing is, I'm doing four data sets, my four product lines. If you had five, you make it five. If you had two, you make it two. I'm going to make it uh, four. And I happen to know that I'm, I'm reporting on roll-up summary fields for my gross sales dollars for each of these product lines, which I happen to know I max out at about eight. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that uh, my scale, my range for the first set of data is going to be zero to eight million. And then my first data that I'm going to show, my first product, just as a test, four, five, six, one million, two million, three, four, five, six. If I don't count, I do it wrong. Three, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll do four million. One, two, three, four, five, six. As soon as I tab off of this or click on the next thing, you'll see my data set one's the dark blue. I have four of them, and they're graduated one, two, three, and four million. If I come down to data set two, now the reason I do this I don't need a data set two. I like a data set two. And the reason I like a data set two is when you're looking at your report and the background of the report is white, then when you put a second data set in and you max out the values for every one of them, I can have something other than white in the background. So now I can see my gauge bar to see how far I am. It's like a gas gauge running horizontally, if you will. Now, I happen to have, in my organization, a senior VP of sales who is really picky and uh, no, nobody in the room has a senior VP of sales that's important that's a little picky on him. So he, he, he definitely wants to have his cash flow represented as green. Now I can pick any color on the screen, they're your standard choosers, but if you're an old hex programmer, you know that red is zero, the first set is zero, green is the second set of zeros, and blue is the third. So I happen to know that uh, 0088 is a really pretty green color, looks like cash. The other side is where I don't want to have it, I want to have red. And the red makes a, a nice little background, and it's like, well, that's all the money that they, uh, that, uh, they have that belongs to me that I don't have yet. So there's my little image. A couple of little things we're going to finish up on here just real quick. We're going to come down to our uh, axes. And I'm just going to put in a, a left-hand axis. Currently, there's an axis on the bottom. And I'm going to use labels. I'm going to add four labels. Just click on the Add New Label button. And the first one was the uh, light at this point. Uh, fire some uh, uh, fire bullet. There you go. Thank you. Uh, and then, of course, was the Nimbus 2000. And then, of course, was the Nimbus 2001. And you really have to look for it. It's one of the books that's referenced one of the old brooms that nobody likes. I think the Weasley's one of them. Uh, it was the shooting star. So I type all this in, and I tab off of it, and I come up to the top of my screen, and that is an image that I can put into a report that will look pretty good and give me what I want to see. Now, only a couple little things left. First, I want to go back to my data for a second and show you one of the really cool things that the image chart editor does for you. If I change my, one of my values from 3 million to uh, 7 million and tab off of it, as soon as I do that, not only does it update my upper right-hand corner here, 
so I can see the 7 million being updated, what it's going to look like. In addition, Google will come in and highlight the line in red of the URL code that you want to change. Where is these value at? So you can see, as I uh, look through here, here's where I put the 7 million. My four values are right here. I just cut these out, I put in merge fields, and this becomes uh, a dynamic chart that will be different from every single account in the system. So we're all ready to actually take this back to uh, Salesforce. Here uh, is a, right here it gives me the URL. All I gotta do is click in there once. Control C then, it's copied to my buffer. Hot tab back over to uh, my uh, Firefox session in Salesforce. And let's go into my account fields. So now I'm gonna do a brand new custom field. It's going to be a formula field. I click next. And now I've got to choose every formula has to return a type of data. Could be a date, could be uh, a number, could be a percentage. If you look through the list, you'll see there is not one labeled image. If you want to return an image, you must know that it's very logical. You, of course, want to choose text. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. <laughs> so we'll say this is the 19th September demonstration of this. Uh, so we'll show up and find this very quickly. I go ahead and hit next. And now it's asking me to put in the formula field. I always use the advanced formula option because then I have my functions. The function I want to use is the image function. And when you go out to session uh, for the chat feed, you see I posted a document a couple days ago that talks about other images we can do in there as well. It's a very useful little feature. As you look at this, you'll see that it says, comes the image function name, then parentheses, the URL calling, that's the URL we just generated by Google. Some ultimate text in case it's going through a braille reader and somebody wants to know, I can't see the text, but the image, what's the text for this? And then of course we have the height and the width, which was? Thank you. So, I'll go ahead and say, well, this is going to start with image. Open parenthesis. The URL has to be in double quotes, so I just put double quotes in. I paste in my buffer. There's my whole URL. I put double quotes, I can put a comma. This is my image text, my alternate. And then, what was the size of it? Yeah, you'll notice though that Salesforce says in the, over in the right hand side here, uh, height then width. So the thing to note, and the reason I had to remember that, is so you know that it moves in backwards. It's 100 by 400. And if you don't do this, you get a lot of white space around the image and the report looks really ugly. So this is how you make it look good. Last but not least, we find the area, so we have our one, two, seven, and four. And again, don't bother trying to write all this down. It's all going to be posted in the session. So there's the first string. The second string, I'm going to take off the uh, one million, two million, seven million, four million, separated by commas, you'll notice, and end up with the vertical bar, which is this starts the second data set. Now, all I have to do is I'm going to add these strings together with the plus sign. That's how we add things in formula fields. But, uh, and then insert the merge fields. Now I can go look up the merge fields, but I'm assuming if you're going to attempt this, you've probably already looked up merge fields before. So uh, a friend of mine called Mark just posted them to my chatter feed. It's very nice and handy. Chatter can be useful for so many things. And I can paste them in right here. Now, I'm doing a few other things as well. I just mentioned that the data sent in is separated by commas. So if my numeric fields contain commas, first I want to convert the numeric field to text. And then I want to substitute the commas for blanks. You can look this up on the session notes. It's all there to tell you how to do it. But uh, this becomes then the finished component. This is now a graphical image function field that uh, on every single account will give me the role. So I could check my syntax, or I could just hit next and go dangerously, which in syntax is fine. Uh, hit next again. Uh, determine what page layouts I might want to put it on, and hit uh, save. So with that, we've just created a formula field on every account. And every account is, uh, that's going to have the product rollups as a graphical field. And now here's my boring report. And if I want to make my boring report interesting, I can go into my customize. I can go look for my uh, 19th of September field. I can 
drag that field and put it right between the ugly text and voila, run report. That's all it takes to put in Google image charts for all changing for all of your accounts. It's that easy.